into the last 20 years or so, we used to live in a society that frequently colored inside the lines, where everything had to be done a certain way. I mean, just ask Philip Stanhope, 18th century Earl of Chesterfield, who coined the first modern usage of etiquette as a set of conventional rules of personal behavior in polite society, outlining expected and social behaviors that follow the norms of a society, social class, or group. You can read all about it in How to Be a Polite Schmuck in his 1774 book titled Letters to His Son of the Art of Becoming a Man of the World and a Gentleman, also known as Lhasa BMWG. What the f- the sentiment of proper behavior has been echoed in our culture for centuries. Everything has to adhere to a norm and follow a specific system. The school curriculum, for example, used to be so much stricter and used to follow such a rigid rule set. Basically, because we believed that the world was relatively unchanging and fixed. And something that was standard maybe a hundred some odd years ago would still somehow be of use in the modern age. And still be relevant and and essential in our present day. But a lot of things we expected to use in the modern century kinda just slowly died out as we became more relaxed and less conservative in our culture. I mean, there are some things our society really tried to hammer into our heads. And if we didn't know these things, we'd somehow not be prepared for adult life. And yet, these things have fallen out of relevancy. I mean, Roman numerals? Please. This is only gonna be relevant when trying to figure out which GTA has Nico Bellic. Versives looks great on a D&D campaign letter, but other than that, don't think we'll be using it. And then along came the internet, a rapidly changing new way to communicate with others. And in our attempt to contain this growing and ever abundant knowledge, we tried to tame it with, you guessed it, etiquette. Enter the 90s classroom. With more people making the transition from typewriters to personal computers in the workplace, society believed that we needed to prepare our youths for this digital transition into the new age by introducing an etiquette to typing. One does not simply push buttons, you have to do it the right way, the proper way. I mean, if you don't, who's gonna hire you? One must push like this with both hands. Wait about that two finger type. <laughs> Fix your wrist, for God's sake. Teachers took one look at computers and were we're like, oh boy, throw out those cursives and Roman numerals, kids. We're gonna learn how to hack Macintosh. Oh, wait, I can't type either. And there in the bright light stood the company Toolworks with a beacon of hope. Enter the software Toolworks, also known as Toolworks for short. Best known for Chess Master 2000, Mario is Missing, and most importantly, Mavis Beacon teaches typing. Toolworks saw an opportunity to teach people around the world how to be more accustomed with using keyboards for better efficiency and to navigate the web, as they quickly realized this growing interest in the internet boom wasn't going away anytime soon. This phenomenon was quickly becoming a necessity for many workplaces, with a vast majority of people completely new to the internet wanting to learn how to get better accustomed to quick navigation. In 1987, Toolworks unveiled the instructional typing software known as Mavis Beacon. Mavis Beacon was developed to be the personification of an instructional typing software, and her name is derived from a combination of Mavis Staples, one of the dev's favorite singers, and the word beacon, an allusion to her role as a guide to typing. Several different models have been used to represent the fictional typing teacher Mavis Beacon over the years, but it all started with the first model, Haitian-born René L'Espérance, being discovered by a software dev behind a perfume counter at a Saks Fifth Avenue. Since then, her look has changed in order to keep with the times in the company's attempt at maintaining the image of a modern professional typing instructor. The software program is set up to look like a typing institute, and you're greeted at your desk by Mavis Beacon herself, where you're prompted to a menu of options to choose from. You can skip right to the lesson, or do other interactive exercises on the side, like learn about proper typing postures, like how to sit properly while you're flaming someone over on Yelp, or even venture into something known as office ergonomics. Through a series of video clips, Mavis Beacon could analyze a student's keystrokes and point out problem areas such as transition rates between keys and key shift errors, and since its inception, the software has been released on almost any major system you can think of, including Windows, Mac operating systems, and even old type integrated systems like the Atari 400, Amiga systems, and even the Commodore 64. And this software 
wasn't only considered a typing aid, it also provided a lot of fun to the user. Some versions of the software included mini games such as arcade style games, racing games, a custom lesson designer, speed tests, typing games for jokes, riddles, recipes, and even multi-language typing instruction. I mean, they really wanted to make typing fun and easy for everyone to pick up, all while maintaining this light-hearted classroom kind of feel for their students. And to add to this experience in true 90s CD-ROM fashion, a certificate of achievement could also be printed by the user to show what level they'd mastered upon completing each test. That's right, you could really flex your skills and slap that certificate onto your typing resume. Unfortunately, some retailers were reluctant at first to put Toolworks products on their shelves for the mere fact that Mavis Beacon was an African-American woman. Yeah, this was somehow a concern even in the 90s. However, once her popularity became more widespread, many of these distributors reversed this decision and quickly began displaying the software using Mavis's image. The teaching software was released to schools around the world, with the company also releasing at-home and personal editions for people who weren't in school and just wanted to learn the basics of typing. Mavis Beacon became such a household name in the early 90s that people began experiencing a Mandela effect with the typing mascot, mistakenly believing that the fictional character was, in fact, a real-life person. Some people even have recollections of seeing her on television being interviewed or winning contests. No, that's popular 90s kid show actress Lynn Thigpen. No, that's Oprah. This common misbelief actually led to her receiving both a lot of hate and praise from the general public. Toolworks reported to have received several emails and letters from news outlets requesting interviews and guest appearances. And with Mavis Beacon being an African American woman, Toolworks was also prone to receiving not so savory letters from people who just weren't ready to have an African tutor in the classroom. They just weren't ready to have their kids be taught how to type in school by <coughs> black people. <coughs> Regardless, since the product's debut in 1987, Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing had already sold over 6 million copies worldwide and was arguably the most popular product in the interactive classroom category. Toolworks released many different versions of Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing and was such an influential tool to people just learning how to use the internet that after a while, other companies began to pop up and tried to replicate that same success of Mavis Beacon. None managed to come as close as the kid-friendly version released by Interplay that was targeted at younger audiences. I'm sure many of you will remember that little typing game aimed at little kids known as Mario Teaches Typing. In this version, you can control characters like Mario, Luigi, and Peach and have to navigate the characters throughout the levels with their speeds being dictated by how fast and accurately you're able to type. In my house, we had Mavis Beacon Teaches Typing 5. I personally didn't use the software all that much. I'm more of a 2 prong typer. I mean, by the time we purchased this thing, I was already regularly using the internet, browsing Sailor Moon fan websites at the ridiculous age of 5. My mom, however, she had a field day with this product. And after a couple of weeks, she became the most eloquent typer in our household. Only to drop it and then, you know, forget about it and become a two-prong typer like myself. Nobody's perfect. But nonetheless, Mavis Beacon to this day will always be remembered as a household name. In the 90s, she was a beacon of hope to the people, the Betty Crocker of cyberspace. Introducing over 6 million people to a more quick and efficient way to browse the internet, and teaching us typing speeds that could certainly raise eyebrows of employers looking for people with a sharp words per minute type skill. Not only that, but she's groundbreaking for being one of the first female African-American computer instruction characters, which just wasn't that common or a widely accepted idea during her time in the spotlight. I mean, she's pretty much the literal original e-girl. Honestly, that kind of feels like a heritage moment. Can we take a second? So where is Mavis today? Well, the last major update for the software was around 2014, with the most recent version still available on the Broaderbound website, where you can order the latest version of the program's release. With its more recent incarnation being released over five years ago, it's likely we won't be seeing a huge comeback of this software for a very long time. I mean, at least not in a typing iteration. There's no standard for how to type in this modern age, and it's a lot easier to catch on with the integration of smartphones and other devices with keypad functions. I mean, Mavis Beacon could probably come back, not teaching us typing.
Skyping etiquette, but how to navigate through the internet of 2020, like maybe speaking TikTok tutorials or tutorials on how to navigate Windows for people who are just less accustomed to using Windows 10. So I'm left asking myself, does a post-type integrated world really have room for programs like Mavis Beacon anymore? I mean, I think if she's gonna come back, she's gonna need some type of major upgrade. And with us being on our phones all the time, standard keypads aren't as foreign to us as they once were in the late 80s. There needs to be some kind of modern pull. I can see it now. Welcome to Mavis Teaches Typing, the 2020 edition. Please choose one of the following options. Typing for ASMR, how to win an online Twitter debate, Sipping 101, and Name Flashcards. Yo, Brady, I was... Whoa, whoa, wait, man! I'm just, Yo, I'm just typing. Okay, you I'm just can't typing. Be doing this, Brady. That's my computer. Oh my god, that's it's disgusting. not what you think. Okay, you can't be doing this on my computer. You literally, I don't know what the hell you think you're trying to learn how to type guacamole. It's just me for speaking.